With that, we'll welcome our first panel led by uh, Mr. Kipton, uh, the former director of Caltrans and the current chair uh, of the peer review group that's required by statute. And uh, if you could introduce your colleagues, we will uh, afford you the time you need to give us your assessment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, Will Kempton, uh, chair of the California High Speed Rail Peer Review Group. Um, in, my, uh, in my day job, I'm the uh, CEO of the Orange County Transportation Authority. Um, with me today is uh, Lou Thompson, um, who is uh, another member of the committee. Uh, Lou has substantial experience in high-speed rail projects, most notably in the Northeast Corridor, where he managed uh, some fairly uh, large programs uh, in, in the course of his career. And then many of you know John Shocker, formerly with the California Transportation Commission, who has uh, uh, been appointed by the uh, Director of Finance <coughs> to serve on the uh, peer review group. I, I know you are familiar with our work, and we've had a number of opportunities to talk to you individually and collectively. Um, you know, we did uh, 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 submit a funding plan as required under the uh, law, uh, which was dated January 3rd of 2012, and we also uh, added additional comments on the uh, draft business plan uh, in March of this uh, year. Uh, these reports do uh, follow a number of reports by the group uh, dealing with issues that have developed in the course of our analysis. Uh, of the plans and programs of the authority. In all of those reports, uh, for anybody's uh, information, may be found on the group's website at uh, cahsrprg.com. Uh, in making our comments, we do want to really acknowledge the fact that um, in the past six months, uh, literally uh, since we uh, issued the funding plan, we have gotten a very good uh, collaboration from the uh, High Speed Rail Authority, and I think that that's really uh, served as a positive uh, 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 result in terms of uh, getting information, getting a quick turnaround on having our questions answered, and, and I think the quality of our of our input has been improved by uh, the uh, responsiveness of the authority. Um, so uh, just let me dive into this uh, quickly. Uh, what I'd like to do is maybe give some brief summary comments and ask my colleagues to comment on what you identified, Mr. Chairman, and some of the uh, other senators with respect to uh, the issues that still remain. And uh, it is about risk, and there are significant risks that still remain that have to be addressed. We'll do our best to identify those risks and give you an indication of what we think are the uh, are the severity uh, of them um, and what we uh, have observed uh, that the authority is doing to uh, mitigate those risks. And then at the end, after uh, my colleagues have had an opportunity to speak, I would offer some conclusionary remarks. Um, let me start by saying, and I think this is probably something that most people would agree with, the revised plan has been measurably improved. It uh, clearly is a clear vision of high-speed rail within California's uh, overall transportation system. It uh, presents a more realistic business model. It is a better approach to the phasing of the project, the early attention to the bookends of the system, the Silmar to Los Angeles, Anaheim, and the San Jose to San Francisco uh, segments are, are important. That means that benefits will be generated much earlier. Uh, the stranded investment uh, risk is uh, reduced uh, by virtue of this approach. But some concerns uh, from earlier reports by this group remain. There still is no source of federal or private funding to finance construction beyond the work in the Central Valley. We do know that the uh, Brown administration has offered the potential of state-level options such as cap-and-trade revenues in amounts uh, sufficient to uh, finance the gap if other sources do not materialize. We also strongly believe that management resources are uh, inadequate at this point to the immense uh, task ahead. Uh, and uh, we know the authority is aware of that issue and is working to uh, mitigate that risk, which is uh, substantial. Uh, we think the capital costs uh, in the Central Valley appear to be reasonably estimated, but costs outside the valley uh, are still in the earlier stages of development. They're based on assumptions of uh, availability of funding that are not settled. Uh, the authority has included contingencies in its estimates, but potential schedule, schedule slippages could put uh, pressure on the contingency allowances. Demand forecasts have again been lowered, supported by professional peer review, and it is an improvement. Uh, the forecasts continue to be subject to a broad range of potential outcomes. Operating and maintenance costs are based on a relatively simple model that should be improved in order to yield better forecasts of, ca of cash flow generation, and thus a better picture of the prospects for private investment beyond the initial operating uh, section 
direction. Um, uh, the benefit cost analysis also should be further strengthened. Uh, but again, a clear vision, a much better approach in terms of the system uh, that uh, is being laid out for early, uh, earlier completion. Uh, so beyond uh, the initial segment of, uh, in the Central Valley, there is, uh, a, there is uh, obviously uh, attention provided to the bookends. Uh, then uh, there is, in addition to that, uh, focus on the uh, iOS South. Uh, which would provide for a connected system uh, if completed from uh, Merced Madera uh, all the way to the uh, uh, Los Angeles Anaheim area and beyond that uh, some improvements to the existing rail in the northern part of the state. It is this system that makes sense from a phasing perspective. And so with that, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to do is ask uh, my colleagues, maybe we could start with Mr. Thompson and uh, uh, go into some of the mo uh, more detailed risk issues. That's fine, Mr. Thompson. Welcome. Thank you. I, I think I will just pass my time for questions and, and save yours. Okay. I'm sure we'll have some. Mr. Schalker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. I'll try and be brief. I just want to comment on four simple areas, the business plan, funding in general, a worst-case scenario, and a, cover major risks, which we'll cover, I'm sure, in more Q&A. Uh, first, this business plan is a major improvement. And as I've been fond of saying, you have to learn to walk before you run. And the state of inner city rail in California right now is one where we're crawling. So this is a much more realistic way to approach developing high-speed rail through incremental stages. Uh, secondly, funding. In the end, after we discuss uh, management resources as a primary risk, funding is really going to be the primary driver here. And the uncertainty of future funding beyond what's been identified for the uh, initial segment in the Central Valley and hopefully for the bookends remains to be the biggest question mark in how we go forward. And hopefully uh, as we get into uh, the next fiscal year, et cetera, and start to see some of the revenues generated from the alternative source cap and trade identified uh, by the authority, we'll have a much better handle on the uh, confidence level of whether that funding would be available. Uh, uh, finally, we do have an item that we're going to comment on in the future in our report about a worst-case scenario, which is to say what happens if all we do is we get the Central Valley segment and the bookends completed? Really, what are we left with at that point if by chance cap and trade and any other sources of funding do not materialize for a significant period of time and we could not continue to expand the system. And I, I think you'll see as we talk further in detail today uh, that there are some very significant benefits, especially those addressing independent utility and experience and cost data that we could get by completing uh, just that initial segment. Uh, and finally on major risks, which uh, you'll hear us talk about would be the management resources, which in my personal opinion is the number one immediate <coughs> risk that must be addressed because even if we had a pile of money fully available to build the entire system on this table in front of us today without adequate management resources for the oversight of the spending and contracting of that funds, we could not be sure that they would be used efficiently or productively. And that's, that's the number one item that I see uh, along with other risks that will be discussed later on. Thank you very much. That, Mr. Kempton, did you want to go ahead? C certainly, if I could, Mr. Chairman, uh, just a, uh, hopefully a, a brief uh, couple of comments in conclusion. Um, as we said at the outset, uh, the, uh, the business plan as revised does represent a substantial improvement in an implementation strategy for high-speed rail in California. And by the way, the, uh, the report that uh, Mr. Chalker uh, referenced, uh, we do expect to have out by the end of this week. Uh, we're finalizing the report. There's a lot of detail, and we want to make sure that uh, we have it right and that we're uh, adequately uh, representing the views of all of our colleagues. Uh, we do find that the uh, plan, uh, while still involving some very significant risks, which we will hopefully be able to discuss with you, uh, is considerably more real, reasonable and realistic than, uh, than previous uh, proposals. Uh, our concerns regarding the independent utility of the initial proposed investment have been substantially addressed by the authority's early focus on the IOS. We, in our funding plan, had recommended that you not proceed with the appropriation of, of uh, state and federal money for the project based on the fact that we uh, were concerned that a $6 billion investment on its own within the Central Valley had no uh, independent utility of note. Uh, again, the strategy that is now being proposed, which is early focus uh, on the uh, 
on the uh, uh, blended approach and on the uh, bookends of the project, which will be investments not lost to the public, uh, as well, and, and most significantly, the connection uh, of the Bakersfield to uh, Palmdale uh, and San Fernando Valley area as something that provides for a system of improvements that will be uh, of benefit to the, uh, to the public. We do urge that the legislature, working with the administration, assure uh, itself that the fledging, fledgling cap-and-trade program is a viable source of funding for high-speed rail uh, capital improvements in the event that no other state or federal money is identified uh, for the program in the near term. Um, and this uh, assurance should also include a determination that these funds will be available in the amount and when they are needed <coughs> to complete at least the initial uh, connected system as well as the bookends that are proposed in the revised business plan. Because the utility of the system will be enormously enhanced by going beyond the Central Valley to complete the uh, IOS, we believe that the ability of the cap and trade program or some other source of reliable funding to support the IOS completion is absolutely a critically essential to the success of the program. Based on this new appro approach to providing uh, an initial connected system of improvements and our focus uh, uh, and the focus of the authority on early investments uh, uh, that uh, will be uh, beneficial to the public with or without uh, the completion of the program, the peer review group uh, recommends that any legislative appropriation of federal and uh, Prop, a, Prop 1A bond funds be subject to the following conditions. First of all, we think the authority needs to present an approved action plan to the legislature for obtaining adequate management resources to effectively conduct a program of this magnitude. As Mr. Chalker indicated, this is the most significant concern that we have at this juncture. Uh, it is absolutely essential in order for this program to proceed that uh, a management uh, team is in place and that the legislature is comfortable uh, that uh, the, the management uh, uh, resource issue has been addressed. Secondly, we uh, think that as a condition of any legislative appropriation that the legislature be fully informed of the risks associated with the development of a high-speed rail system for California as outlined in this report and input from others. Uh, and um, we know that these hearings and the previous uh, hearings that uh, many of you have attended uh, around the state uh, are certainly informing you uh, in that regard. And these risks, uh, just as a reminder, startup of a new agency, uh, the uh, adequate management resources, the availability of funding, are the demand forecasts optimistic? Is the operating and maintenance uh, model uh, credible? Uh, those are risks that uh, uh, will have to be addressed. And finally, uh, as a condition, we uh, believe that the authority should be required in its 2014 business plan to uh, do three things. One, substantially upgrade its demand modeling. Two, develop a more uh, capable and credible O&M cost model. And three, based on better demand, be based on better demand and operating cost information uh, uh, to uh, revise the benefit cost analysis. And uh, those are the uh, things that we think should be addressed as part of the uh, 2014 business plan. The authority will uh, presumably be well on its way if you choose to appropriate the dollars uh, with the uh, Central Valley segment, so there will be time for them to further uh, review and uh, update uh, these, uh, these models. Uh, there are two issues we did not address. Uh, obviously, the broader policy determinations that, uh, uh, that uh, as to where to spend state resources, that's certainly not our purview. That is for uh, you and the administration to decide. Uh, we also did not uh, attempt to address the uh, legal questions, uh, whether the proposed program meets the requirements of Proposition 1A. None of us are attorneys, and uh, that did not seem to be appropriate. So while the plan is not perfect and still contains uh, some very significant significant risks. Um, with uh, these considerations, we uh, will be presenting this report, as I say, uh, to the legislature by the end of the week. Um, we uh, have uh, satisfied some of our concerns uh, relative to the initial uh, uh, pieces of this program. Uh, many concerns still remain, and certainly uh, the concerns for the longer term are much more serious, uh, particularly with the, uh, related to the uh, magnitude of additional funding that will re be required for proceeding beyond the initial system connections. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll conclude my comments, and hopefully we can answer any of your questions. Okay. I have a few. I know Senator Lowenthal, Senator Harmon, <coughs> Senator Pavley all have questions. Uh, Mr. Kimpton, I know in the fast-moving pace that we're working in, most likely you haven't had a chance to look at the Governor's May revision, but uh, if you could, when you have the full report, I hope you would uh, 
address a couple of things at the very least. In the governor's uh, newest budget, he proposes taking $385 million from uh, the vehicle weight fees um, to the general fund. Now that was originally identified to service the debt. Have you looked at that at all, its capacity to service that debt, or are we going to be taking it right out of the general fund? Have, have not looked at that, Mr. Chairman. Would be happy to try to consider that. Uh, we, I was, I think, the peer review group was also aware of the uh, transfer of the wait fees for debt service purposes, but the adequacy of that amount in terms of being able to service the debt, we have not looked at. It's a, it's a, a very important thing, certainly for me, as I've said many times. Um, in my budget responsibility of having health and human services, taking money from those programs is. Uh, is very, very problematic for me and the ability to take it from a discrete fund and how much that discretion is actually absolute.